All right. Well, this is number three in a series here uh, we've been doing on Tuesday evenings. Give some folks a few minutes to come in here, but we're doing a series on uh, from a regional alignment to regional transformation. And we have tonight a, a friend of mine, a dear sister in the Lord, technically my next door neighbor because I live in Ohio. She's in Indiana. Yay! But she's going to be sharing, uh, along with myself, uh, on this subject tonight, dealing with regional alignment uh, and, and the transition uh, into regional transformation. I do believe God is speaking some things uh, to the body of Christ in this season, and this is why we're going to do these uh, lives every Tuesday evening. We've got several guests coming up. You're going to want to um, uh, check out here uh, in the near future. Uh, I believe next week we have uh, Greg uh, Crawford from Des Moines, Iowa coming in, and the week following awesome. we have uh, David Hoskins going to be uh, sharing from Houston, Texas. And then we've got a whole plethora of other uh, guests we're going to be bringing in as well. Just we're going to speak into this subject and really see what God will say uh, to us. And I believe it's going to plant some seeds in leaders across the nation, uh, around the world. Uh, and I believe it's going to resonate with a lot of leaders also who have already been hearing some of these same things. You know, it's interesting when you hear something. For the first time, you kind of think, am I, am I all alone here? But when you begin to hear something from another voice, you, it becomes encouraging mm -hmm. um, because you realize you're not alone. And God speaks the same thing to people, to leaders at the same time across the world. Those that are sensitive uh, and really in tune with the heart of God. And so this is something I believe God's speaking, not just to me. Um, not just to Janet, not just to some of the guests I'm bringing on here, but I believe God's speaking uh, and really kind of channeling our efforts uh, to pay attention to the region in which we are planted, the region in which we are sent to, the region in which we live. And so we're going to kind of speak into the subject matter tonight a little bit. I made a disclaimer, actually, uh, the first uh, session and the disclaimer was this, I don't claim to be an expert on the subject matter. Um, my guests aren't making that expo explanation as well, or that, they're not making that, dis I'm sorry, my guests are not claiming to be experts as well, but they do have a level of experience to speak into the subject matter. And so uh, I said it this way, the body of Christ has not been this way before. Mm -mm. And so there's some truths from a prophetic standpoint, we have to speak into, uh, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says that uh, God doesn't do anything unless he first speaks to the prophets. And so there's a prophetic declaration that goes ahead of time. Now, those who begin to walk and do and build and become experts, then they can also speak from the other side of this from a wisdom standpoint. So we have a degree of wisdom that will be spoken from experience but there's also a degree of revelation um, that's being spoken based on what God is, is saying right now and what God is kind of stirring uh, in a number of leaders across the earth. Anyway, so we're going to move into this topic. I want to open this uh, dialogue. I told Janet before uh, you guys, um, uh, when we went live here, I told her this is a conversation we're going to have and we're going to let the world eavesdrop tonight. And so we're going to just kind of dialogue about this and share what God's been speaking to us, what God's been doing in our lives and ministries. Um, and so we're going to have a good time here. Anyway, I had this interesting thought last week. It actually, it was something that God began to stir in me probably about 20 years ago, actually. And I haven't really thought about this. I mean, for a number of years. Speaking to us, but, the, but the thought was this. Ministries. There's a scripture. Uh, in the Old Testament, and it's repeated over and over and over and over. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 12, you can read it in verse 5, 11, 21. Deuteronomy 16, you can read it in 2 and 6. I mean, there's so much uh, references we could give, but here's, the, here's what it says. It says, the place where God chooses to place his name. Come on. Now, the reality is that God gave Israel a territory. 
it was a large region. He defined its borders. He gave them an east, a, a south, west, north. He gave them uh, definite borders to the territory, the land which he was promising them. Even within that territory, there were different regions. And eventually, uh, the, the land would be divided as an inheritance to all of the 12 tribes. And so they were, it was divided into different regions, even within their territory. And so we see, the, see this concept of God focusing on regions. Well, when you see this scripture repeated, you know, the place where God chooses to place his name, there's, a, there's a, a, an exhortation that God gives to the people in scripture to recognize or discern where is that specific place where God chooses to place his name because it wasn't everywhere. There were only certain places that, that qualified for that. And when you recognize that, there's a connection or alignment with that place. And so it talks about when you discern the place where God puts his name, that you go and you offer your gifts there. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of different things it says about it. But I find it interesting because you, you go over to the New Testament and when you track the ministry of the, the church and the apostles and, and uh, uh, the expansion of the kingdom, you begin to see that, the, for instance, the apostle Paul and his team, they developed a strategy. Uh, they didn't have this initially, but once they got into the groove of things, and they were still learning on the go, yeah. once they l learned some things and got some experience behind their belt, Paul and his team would specifically target uh, key centers, key cities of influence to really begin to build a beachhead from which to launch out into each region. So this is what I'm seeing God do today. He's once again placing his name in different cities and different regions and it's really up to us to recognize what he's doing to recognize uh, even leaders that have certain graces to help uh, pioneer a new and living way for the body of christ to take the land yeah. so anyway I just want to put that thought out there god's saying and doing some things here and we're going to kind of jump into this in just a moment before we do i want to introduce our guest here tonight and i wanted to share just a few minutes about herself her ministry What's going on at City Gate in Evansville, Indiana, and uh, just what's what's God speaking to you today? Take take a few minutes and take your liberty. And uh, what's well, an honor? Way. It's an honor to be here with you, Bo. Um, we've talked about doing this for quite a while, and I think God's timing is perfect. So um, I live, as Bo said, in Evansville, Indiana. And I have been here almost 40 years. I have tried to leave. So what you're talking about in the land, we'll talk about that shortly. But I've tried to leave many times until I finally surrender to say, okay, God, obviously I'm here for a purpose. So, uh, but I'm originally from Kentucky. We have an apostolic kingdom training center here in Evansville. We just launched our new building where we uh, moved into our own location. We've been sharing a building for like seven or eight years. Well, it's been about eight years. So it would have been nine this spring. Uh, yeah, this spring. So uh, we moved in this new building and launched it on February the 27th. So we're basically brand new. Uh, we're excited to see what God's doing. All of that even was just, uh, just step by step. God did it. I mean, he just brought us here. So we're excited to be on this side of town and excited to see what he's doing every week. We're having new people come in. And so we're just waiting to, to see how he wants us to partner with him. So anyway, I have four children. My husband's name is Richard. I have four children, 12 grandchildren, and um, uh, life is good. So thank you for having me tonight. Oh, it's so, so good to have you. You are a trip. You are a hoot. Anybody that gets to know you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, well, you might. You are, you're a firecracker in the spirit. Is what yeah. you are. But <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to to be um, connected with you, to be a friend, to be a co-laborer in the kingdom. I'm excited about what God's doing in Evansville, Indiana. In fact, yes. you've got a conference coming up, don't you? Want to share a little bit about the conference coming up? I do. Thanks. I would love to. I forgot all about that. So thanks for the plug. So um, several years ago, the Lord, I'm not sure where to really where to look on this. I've got a new laptop, so I don't know really where I'm looking. So if I look cross-eyed, I don't mean to. Um, several years ago, the Lord gave us a mandate um, uh, to begin to raise women up in in the in the 
the opposite, if you will, of the counterfeit of what we're seeing in our nation. And so it was literally, it is an assignment. So we started uh, what we call Woman Arise, and it's an international uh, conference every year. Of course, we've only had it once to make it you know, to go big. We've, we've had smaller ones, but, um, so we couldn't have it last year. So this year, actually the 28th of this month, it starts and we're going to have, um, Becca Greenwood out of Colorado and we'll have Barbara Yoder out of, um, where's she out of deep, I think Detroit or out of, out of Michigan. And then we've got Amy Rylander. I think, you know, her, she's going to come and prophetic artist. She's going to come and paint. So we're excited. It starts like on Thursday night uh, and we'll go all the way till Saturday night. And then Sunday evening we'll shift because we we've moved the location three times because of size. And so on Sunday evening, we'll then come back to our house because we can't hold that many people. So we're excited to have it. So if, yeah, we would love to have you. We've got boat. Oh, it's so cool. I saw the list today. We've got people coming from all over the state, like all the states are here. So I'm mm -hmm. so excited just to just to be able to just partner with God with this. And uh, last, not last year, but the year before, we saw incredible things. I mean, literally, and if Barbara or Becca were, were sitting here with us, they would agree or they would say the same. Literally, the glory cloud hit in such a way and, and lingered to the degree that it was one of those where Barbara was actually, well, all of us, when it was our time to speak, was holding on to the to the pulpit saying, and Barbara's like, I don't know what to do. I can't do anything. But wow. the the glory, it was just so powerful. So anyway, we've got um, a couple hundred. I don't know exactly the number yet. People are still signing up. Uh, so we would love to have more of you. So I'll throw that plug in there. So thank you. Um, go to my website if you want to just check out the, the conference itself. It's called Forged through the fire, because I think if anybody were honest, they'd say we've been through a few fires this last mm -hmm. two years. So uh, mm -hmm. we're excited. Um, people just um, ministries were birthed out of that conference last year or, or 2019. And um, I, I can't even begin to tell you just so much birthing. And that's really what we're seeing right now. God is raising people up, not just women. And we're not anti-men. Let me just make that real clear. We have mm -hmm. some men coming to the conference. But literally, I do believe this in this new decade, it's it's time for women to rise up. So we're just honored to get to be a part of it. So we're excited. Amen. And they uh, register by going to Janet Douglas Ministries dot com. Is that correct? That's it. Mm -hmm. And it's Thank right you. there when you get on the page. It's it, it'll it'll hit you in the face. OK, yeah. Janet Douglas Ministries dot com. All right. Amen. That sounds awesome. Well, tell you what, tell, tell us just a couple of minutes about what you're doing in Evansville. Uh, what what is City Gate? Okay, City Gate is a Apostolic mm -hmm. Kingdom Training Center. Um, it's not a church. We don't operate or function like your average Sunday church, if you will, or those kinds of gatherings. In fact, we have more people that attend a church and come here for training. And so we're, we're, we're just an apostolic hub. We have training all the time. We're always having people come in and speak. Matter of fact, we're having you come in in July. We're excited about that. But usually once a month, we'll have a well, you know, a, a speaker from um, all over the nation and nations when they open up. And um, we have usually have weekend gatherings at least once a month. And then we meet on Tuesday nights for prayer and intercession teaching. And so um, we're training and equipping and sending out. I mean, we're, we're actually doing what the Bible says. So we're small in number. We also, um, I'm also the Indiana state leader for SPAN, which is Becca's uh, ministry that she has for spiritual warfare. And so we travel, I travel and speak myself and uh, also use well, I go through her ministry, if you will, to do uh, land assignments, and we'll talk about that. So it, it's a variety, but it's all training and equipping and sending out. And so it's just it's just awesome to see what God's doing in this hour. That's awesome. Well, tell you what, I want to read a scripture as we get started here today, and we'll just jump in here and okay. follow. And looking forward to hearing what the Holy Spirit's been speaking to you, uh, Janet. Yeah, so take your liberty. Don't let me box you in. I just want to set you up here, okay? Okay. I'm not boxing you in, but I want to Don't read the scripture. Me in, <laughs> okay, I won't. 
Book of Joshua, chapter one, verses one through nine. This passage so speaks into this topic. Out. There's so much here. I just want to read this real quickly and just touch on a couple things. And I'm going to hand it over to you too, Janet. You can just run with us for a little bit. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them. Talking about the region, you know. Uh, there was a transition in leadership. I, I really, that could be hard for me to not preach on this. There's so much. I know. That's right. But uh, th there's such there's such a transition right now in leadership. I really believe it's not just that there's new leaders. It's that there's a new focus mm -hmm. of, of leaders that are in place. Uh, I, I said this the first and the second sessions. I'm going to say it again here right now. This really got my attention last year. Uh, last fall, actually 2019 is really when it started. Um, the fact that most pastors are easily tunnel visioned by their local church and the responsibilities they have and all of the great needs to minister to their people, yeah. they get so tunnel visioned. This is the tendency to get tunnel visioned on their church, their ministry, so that they they do not recognize what God is doing in the region all around them. And the same thing tends to happen for traveling ministers. I'm more of a traveling minister. I, I go all over the states, all over the world. The tendency that I have is to get tunnel vision on all the individual churches I'm going to, all the nations I go to, and for me to be oblivious to the region in which I am living or I'm planted in. So when, I, when I'm seeing in this hour that the Holy Spirit is not necessarily just bringing all new leaders on the horizon. It's he's taking the existing leaders and he's redirecting our focus so that we're not so tunnel visioned on what's in, in our, our hand, our responsibility based on our vision, based on our gifts, based on our anointing, that we begin to recognize the region in which we live and recognize that God has a heart for that region. God loves the people. And, and we actually have a responsibility yes. for the region in which we live. So yes. let's let's keep on reading real quickly here. I, I, I could preach all night on this, but I just want to lay this out here. And Come on, I love it. So he says, you and all the people, you know, go over the Jordan to the land which I am giving yes. them to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon that I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates and all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Think about those two, two words right there, your territory. The territory in which we live, the territory in which we are planted, the territory that God sends us to, it belongs to us. It doesn't belong to just a leader or just a few leaders. God told Joshua, you and all this people, all of you together, rise up. I'm giving all of you this land. So mm -hmm. here's, I think, one of the things God is stirring up in all of us in this season this land belongs to us. It's part That's of right. our inheritance. inheritance. That's right. Now, the reality is the whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. thereof. But, but he, God breaks the earth up into regions and he, and he puts it in the hearts of leaders such as Joshua and Caleb and different ones that it will walk by faith, that will see through the eyes of faith, that will realize that God has a heart for different regions. And this whole series has to do with leaders beginning to align, mm -hmm. to begin to function as one so that we can ultimately see a transformation in the region. You know, the big yes. picture was that God had called the Israelites uh, out of Egypt, through the wilderness and into the promised land but they did, their, their, their responsibility didn't stop once they got the promised land. It was actually just beginning. Yeah. They had to evict the giants. 
They had to take over their houses. They had to build cities. They had to develop. They had to, to, to govern and to, and to expand the territory until the entire land God was giving them was governed by the glory of God. Come on. So anyway, back to the passage. I'm going to hand it to you because I'm getting too excited here. He says that no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. It says, be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. He's making a point here. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the left or to the, to the right that you may prosper wherever you go. Can I make the suggestion that a lot of us today, leaders in the church, different churches, different denominations, different streams, that we have easily uh, gone to the left or gone to the right, and we've pushed to different extremes. And instead of having a coordinated attack in terms of taking the land for God, we're, we're so tunnel visioned on our church, our ministry, our vision, our anointing, we're so segregated and so divided that the enemy is sitting back just laughing at us. Do you, do you see that? I Absolutely. see the enemy sitting back laughing at us. Sure. You Absolutely. know, G Jesus said, um, every kingdom that's divided against itself cannot stand. He said, every city, every house divided itself, you know, is brought to desolation, different levels, different mm -hmm. regions, you know. And so God, God is is speaking something in terms of alignment because ultimately it has everything to do with transforming the land um, in which we live here. So I think I think we need to start taking things personal. Absolutely. Your, your territory. We need to start taking it personal when the enemy is encroaching on our land. This belongs to us. That's right. You know, we we are ambassadors of the Lord. We need to take it personal that they are violating God's holy name and his covenant and his truth and his, you know, we need to take it personal and really take responsibility for the land in which we live. All right, let me finish this out here. I'm going to hand it back to you. This book of the law will not, shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. I believe this is talking about the blueprint. We need to follow the blueprint yeah. for the region in which we live. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. I believe this is what God wants for all of us. And I believe this is really what we want as well. Mm -hmm. We can't go about it our own way. We've got to follow the blueprint. We've got to align properly um, with, with leaders in our region and see things come to pass here. Last thing, have I not commanded you? Uh, in case I forgot to tell you, uh, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed for the Lord your God will is with you wherever you Hallelujah. go. Janet, tell me what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you uh, in this season. Well, I will just tell you, Bo, um, with, with my time today, just preparing for tonight, um, I don't believe in coincidences. So, and, and listen, you know, I'm just like you, so I'll take off and I'll go for hours. So you'll just have to mute me because uh, this is exciting because I was actually in Joshua 1, 9 in the whole chapter today, just preparing for tonight. So I'm just going to tag you just a little bit on that because it does line up with where we are as sons of God today. And I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, Dutch Sheets words for the whole world to hear. Uh, one of the things that we laugh about it, but it's true because the Bible says that we are sons of God. And so Dutch says this jokingly but says if we men can be the bride you ladies can be the son so okay. as sons of god we need to know who we are and we need to know that that that's our purpose to be here to change culture and that's basically what joshua had to do mm -hmm. he had to take on from what moses was doing so i just jotted a couple notes so it lines up with where we are in ministry for myself anyway because i'm over 60 and i'm proud of that but I feel like I'm just now getting into ministry and doing what I was purposed to do, doing what I was called to do. And that's the thing that um, uh, 
Joshua waited 40 years to get to this place. If you read that, that chapter, he waited 40 years. How many times have people, maybe you yourself, I know I have quit a few times in the 40 years, but how many people do you know that I know that we know that people know that have quit before they've seen this, mm. uh, purpose come alive and I will say it and you you, you mentioned last year was uh, I don't think you mentioned that it was a hard year but we all know it was a hard year but we are building in the middle of a pandemic Bo it, it doesn't make sense except the obedience of God and so just in this story Joshua had to be obedient because he was leading a whole group of people not just to his destiny, but to their destiny. And I think that's what God is doing in the earth today, that we leaders have to realize that we have been assigned. A lot of people can't go until we go. And so I'm finding that even when I came into City Gate, it's just opened up and explored because when we came here, I wasn't even really sure because of the COVID, because we had to meet on Zoom for a while while we were in transition of buildings, who was actually even going to come in. But the coolest thing was that everybody came back, everybody joined in, and it became a team effort. It wasn't Janet Douglas building. It wasn't anything I did. But in that, I had to learn as a leader, number one, to let them take ownership and I think that's one of the hardest things it is for a leader today. And, and we're getting it. We have to get it. We can't do it all. We're not called to do it all. We're not called to be the only one ministering from the pulpit. And just for an example, tonight I had a 10-year-old, I think she's 10, maybe 11, teach on teach about angels tonight and wow. she did a fabulous job and some would say why would you put a 10 year old in your pulpit because we're a training and equipping center so we need to allow them that place to learn and to grow that said everybody came in took their part and the joy in the uh, uh, the expectation of what God is doing in this place has just exploded. And I think that's the difference. Joshua waited 40, almost 40 years because a spirit of belief had to be, if you go back and read that chapter, a spirit of belief, he had to get delivered of a spirit of uh, uh, unbelief. I'm sorry, a spirit of unbelief. And that had to be dealt with before because that came if you, if you go back and read, that came out of the, the report of the 10 spies. And so the spirit of unbelief, he couldn't go all the way until that was dealt with. And I believe that's where we are today. And God is even using the pandemic to cause us as leaders to really look at ourselves and to really examine what's really going on in our ministry, what's really going on of our purpose, what has God called us to do. And even today in my um, uh, devotion, if you will, that I sent out, I sent it out to our, or the people that partner with us. And, and I just, just said, we have to learn to live on purpose. We have to take the land. It's our inheritance. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about it is God has already given it to us. We have been asleep trying to build a building and trying mm -hmm. to build people and trying to build our kingdom. Let's just be real. We've been too busy building our own kingdoms, but God didn't create us for that. He called us to partner with him to build the kingdom of God, to go in and take the land everywhere we put our feet. He said it was ours. So anyway, I'm excited now, but just think mm -hmm. about that, that, um, you know, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that saw beyond the giants. When I came and even signed the lease to take this building, I had the naysayers. Are you crazy? we're in a pandemic. Are you sure? I heard the voice of the Lord. I had to be obedient and I wasn't fearful. And, you know, God has blessed us beyond measure. It's been incredible. And that just makes me brag on him even more because only God could do what he's doing here in CityGate. We do go out on assignments throughout the state and throughout the nation. I go with other teams. I go to other nations as well and partner with people in the nations. And we do land assignments and things like that. So anyway, it's just incredible that I was here. But if you think about it, God is, I believe, this is just my opinion, what I feel like God is doing with me. And we're teaching about the new wineskin. I believe that we can't go where God wants us to go 
with the old wine skin because it's it, it'll burst it'll burst from the new responsibility from the increased faith the increased revelation authority that god is giving us that's the same thing he did with joshua joshua had to uh get that new uh wine skin he had to have a fresh wine skin so that he could hold where he was going and that's where i think the prophetic comes in because when we see far ahead and that's what god you know that's what that's that's who we are and it's not just for the prophets it's for the sons of god mm -hmm. but as we see the prophetic sign of where we're going we just have to trust that god is leading our steps and so anyway you got me all excited just talking about joshua so that's cool <laughs> I'll, I'll give it back to you because i okay. could preach <laughs> well, i'm going to actually ask you a question here because I, I had something the holy spirit kind of stirred up in me you know, you, you'd men mentioned a few different times about land assignments, um, intercession, spiritual warfare. I know that you uh, work with Becca Greenwood a good bit on some of the different things on that nature. Um, we're talking about alignment, ultimately leading to transformation. But I want you to speak into this from experience. And you can judge how much you want to share or not. Okay. But when you move into intercession, into spiritual warfare... Have you ever experienced something where you receive some backlash <laughs> and it be due to not having the proper alignment and support system in place and you rushing into battle without the alignment? Speak into that just for a few minutes. Here uh, well, that's a Holy Spirit prompt because I was thinking earlier when you when 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 we talked about sharing a couple of things. Before I can go forward, I have to go where I started in that because um, that's really what happened, Bo. Um, I, I knew enough to be dangerous and I was out on my own and doing ministry and even here in town in my own city of Evansville, Indiana, I went out and bless God, I have all authority. And that's what the scripture says. I've given you all authority. But number one, there's a timing element that's in, in, in you have to have in place. Yeah. And definitely you have to have the alignment. So I went out and served notice. I'll, I'll make it, I'll just give you the, the highlights. I went out and served notice on a principality and said, you're going down. And I was very bold. I was like, you know, David and I was going to do it. And uh, within a month, I got very sick. I was very ill. I was not, I was in alignment, but I was not in alignment, if that makes sense. I have the relationship, but I don't know that I was being trained up at that point. This was, this was, this was years ago. So what happened in that was I, I got very sick and for, for uh, almost two years, I had, I got so sick that I had a feeding tube and really wasn't sure I was going to live. And so that being said, um, my apostle at that, well, he's still my apostle, but um, they would call, we would have prayer. And actually that was a time where we shut down city gate because that was his, that was his advice, not advice, but his um, counsel to me, you need to shut everything mm -hmm. down and get well. So our team stayed going, but I sat down for months and just stayed home and just tried to get well. So, so you, fast you, believe, you believe there's a definite correlation between your sickness? Absolutely. And okay. Absolutely. And here's why. So um, months on a feeding tube. Um, so then um, Clay Nash said to me, you need to come and hear Becca Greenwood. I want you to come to Mississippi and do the spiritual warfare school. And I have a feeding tube and I'm weighing 88 pounds. I could hardly... Mm -hmm. I could hardly walk. I mean, I was not in good health at all and wasn't really sure I was going to live myself in reality. Mm. But, you know, the devil can't kill you if you just stay faithful. But anyway, um, so I, I did what my apostle said. When you're in alignment, you honor because you hope they know what they're doing. You hope that they, they lead you by their examples and by their experience. So anyway, I went and Becca came, would come in once a month and teach for a weekend. When I first started going, I had to have someone drive me. That's how sick I was. Mm. So they asked Becca to pray for me and she began to pray for me. And I, I don't even know what happened, except that she knew exactly what I'd gotten into. 
And basically what I did was I opened up the door because I did not have the timing of God. I did not have alignment. So I didn't have that uh, old school would call it covering. I don't call it covering. It's alignment, that team mm -hmm. relationship. Yeah. So uh, I didn't even have the revelation of that, Bo, when this happened. And so I was just getting into alignment, just coming out of a denominational church, if you will, and just learning. But that being said, so uh, she began to speak to the spirit of death. She broke off and, and cut off areas of witchcraft and whatever. And I just remember the, that whole day I laid on the floor while they taught and, you know, just let God deal with me. So I came home and this is why I know that it, it was, it, it co it was so in line with the sickness mm -hmm. and I don't believe in backlash. Let me just make that clear, clear. I don't believe we get backlash if we're in proper alignment, if we're in the timing of God and it's our assignment. I've right. learned that and I've, I've seen it. I've seen it happen many times after this time. So that being said, I um, came home and instantly, Bo, I began to be able to think clearer because mm -hmm. I was so sick. I couldn't even think. I was malnourished. I had no nutrients. And so all I was getting was what my little can would pour in my tube. And so anyway, a few days after that, I just began to think I was able to think clearer and clearer. So I went to the doctor and Holy Spirit said, get the feeding tube out. And, and so I went to the doctor in, in, in his office and said, I want the feeding tube out. And he said, you can't, you'll die. You're, you're 88 pounds. You can't. And I said, if you don't, and there was a few more words than that, but if you don't, <laughs> I'm going to take it out myself. Okay. And um, my husband was with me and he said, you need to listen to her because she'll pull <clears throat> that thing out. So he agreed. He did not like it, but he agreed. He took it out. And here's, here's why the Lord said to me, I was able to hear again. You see, I believe when we're so uh, in, in, engrossed, if you will, when we're, we're, when we're in that place where the enemy just has his hold on us, we can't hear clearly from God. We can't see clearly mm -hmm. from God. So how can we move in the things that he's called us to do? So anyway, the Lord told me I had gangrene and Holy Spirit said, you've got gangrene. That's why I had to have the tube out. And I'm, I'm giving a real short version here, mm -hmm. even though it sounds long, but it's the short version because I, I, I want to hurry. But so the doctor agreed to take it out. And when he did, Bo, it was green. It was full of gangrene. Of course, obviously, they put me right in the hospital and had antibiotics for several weeks. But that being said, and, and it scared him. He said, who told you you had gangrene? And I said, God did. And so I sat down with him and, and well, the next visit and, and talked to him about Jesus letting to the Lord, the whole, I mean, it's so cool. So, but anyway, within that time frame, within a week to two weeks, my health turned around. I started getting healthier and healthier and I do not weigh 88 pounds anymore. <laughs> so that's the beginning of the land assignment. So after that, obviously I continued training. Training is critical alignment is critical um uh, hearing from god for yourself not not taking someone else's assignment is critical uh just because someone else thinks you should do it doesn't mean that it's god telling you to do it you have to hear from god mm -hmm. and i've learned all of this through uh, christian harvest with becca's ministry and and just being on land ourselves. so um anyway that's where i started and then, so I'm going to fast forward to a couple assignments. I'll, I'll share real quick about one uh, uh, in the States and one out of this in, in mm -hmm. Africa, if I can, but I don't know how much sure. time I have. So oh, are we good? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, and, and there are a lot of details I'll have to leave out just because to protect the innocent. Um, but so, mm -hmm. so we have the school. Uh, Becca has a training school for this. And so we hosted the school twice here in Evansville. And each time we had 40, 30 to 40 students that would come and learn. And what it is, is we, we're trained. And then the, the last two, three days, we go out on assignment. I think actually you've been on assignment with them. I think, haven't you? You were just on one this with Becca oh, now yeah, in Ohio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
so you kind of know the drill you you have the training and then you do the you you get the blueprint from heaven god gives you the download on what you're to go deal with and you go deal with it so um in his timing timing is critical i, I know i keep saying that but i just know that i wasn't in the timing of the lord and had no alignment and had no word from the lord i just took that literally all authority i have and well that's that's true but that's mm -hmm. a different level so anyway i know we'll get into that another time so um let me see where do i want to go uh what assignment do i want to take on um let me do the international first just because it was so yeah. relevant to what what we're talking about so three years ago uh we've we've had for for many years we've had uh an orphanage in sierra leone africa and three years ago, I went to the Lord told me, you know, it was time to go over and just check everything out. So you do what you do when you go international, um, you, you minister and you teach all day and you do crusades at night. And so that's kind of what we did for a week. We taught pastors during the day and we did crusades at night. And then we went mm -hmm. to see the children, you know, the drill you go. Mm -hmm. So um, before we went, the Lord told me that I would be pouring communion and healing the land in a certain area. And I would know where that was and when to do it. So I, that was kind of part of my focus for the, for the trip. So it was an hour's drive from the hotel or where we're having the services to the children's home. And I don't like to call it an orphanage. I shouldn't call it that um, to the children's home. And we would go through this certain area of town or go through this town and you just knew and and so i would say to jeremiah i need to we need to stop here and he said no mom they'll kill you here no mom they'll kill you here okay mm -hmm. you know so this happened two or three times throughout the 10 days that we were there so fast forward two days before we got ready to leave on that friday night we were doing um, our final ministry with the group of people and we had a fire tunnel because that's just the easiest way to get hundreds of people through a line and you have two people mm -hmm. praying, right? So um, a, a young girl, I would say probably 12, when she came through, began to manifest and Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, they know you're here. And so, okay, my eyes were open a little bit and I was, I was more alert. So when we went back to the hotel, I told our driver, tomorrow when you pick us up, do not come alone, bring somebody with you. So fast forward, we were going to the to the house, to the children's home the next day or Sunday. And so no more than we got out of got in the car, someone in the like got right up on our back of the car and began to uh, like hit us. And of course, I'm praying in the spirit and this guy's trying to go around us. And you've been to Africa, you know, a lot of the 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 roads are like ravines. I mean, you mm -hmm. just go off a mountain. And so this was in Sierra Leone. And so um, the guy was trying to come around us. And when I turned around through the spirit, I saw full demonic manifest, manifest on this man. And so I spoke to our driver and I said, he's going to try to kill us. So anyway, sure enough, third time around, he kept trying to go around us and run us off the road. Thank God we had a great driver. So in that, in that setting, he, he, he hit us and then he went off the road. And, but when it, when he did, he ran over Sunday morning, he ran over a lady who was walking to church. Everybody's walking to church, right? It's Africa. Mm -hmm. And, um, we need to learn some things from other people and other nations. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we obviously pulled over and we did what we did and we had to go to jail and all of this. So I'm fast forwarding, leaving a lot out. So they kept our driver, but they told us to go on to the, to the children's home and they would give us, get us a ride. Well, instantly I thought we're not going to get there. I just knew in my spirit, we're not going to get to the children's home. So no kidding. One driver takes us about a block. We get out. He says, this is as far as I take you. Okay. So the driver, the, the driver's friend who he brought his armor bearer is what they call him. He stayed with us. And so he got us another driver and sure enough, this, this person took us just two or three, I would say blocks, but it was rocky roads, right? Dirt mm -hmm. roads. Guess where we ended up? The very city where I kept saying I need to go to. Wow. 
And that's how God, that, that, that was our assignment. That's how God illustrated it. And, and there's, it was a good outcome and I don't have time to share all that, but what happened? So we get there. The name of the city, Bo, is called Devil's Hole. <laughs> so wow. we just we just did our thing. And I kid you not, we have to be led by the spirit and, and we have to be uh, we have to hear God clearly, especially when you get into dealing with land. So I have no doubt we were covered like like nobody saw us. Two women, uh, the other lady was African-American, but here I am, white and gray hair, right? Two women in the middle of everybody in the middle of the city going to church. Nobody saw us. We're praying. We're doing what God tells us to do with the land. We're calling forth healing into the land. We're doing all of that. And we do uh, communion and we pour the bread and, the, and put the bread and the juice on the on the ground. And the minute we did that bow, the sun came out and it was like everybody saw us. It was like, hello, you're here. And everybody, all the kids kept running up to me, touching me. I don't think they'd ever seen a Caucasian lady before. And so we got out of there immediately, went on, did our thing and all that. So fast forward, the gentleman that the, the lady was killed was the imam of that city. Mm. Explain, what that, explain what that is for those who are watching. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a city of Muslims. And um, this was the head of the, the I, I don't know if they call it a church, Islamic center. I don't really know what they call it. So forgive me for my ignorance, but uh, he, they, they're allowed to have more than one wife. And so this was one of his wives that were killed. And so, but you can't make that up. You know that God, and so we named the city. I'm trying to hurry. There's so much, so many more details. You'll have to have me back. We'll have to tell stories and let the world listen. Sure. Um, so we renamed the city, which is something that God's just allowed us to do when we go places. We just take it away from man. Like you said, it belongs to us. It belongs mm. to the kingdom of God. So we renamed the city Angel's Gap. And I kid you not, when I got back and we looked through pictures, you can see the difference of how dark it was and how God just broke in. And mm. I haven't heard the latest, but I know right after that, uh, people were coming to the Lord in that region. And I haven't, I haven't heard for a couple of years what's going on in Angel's Gap, but so that's a, that's an a international trip, mm -hmm. um, but it's the same concept. You know, um, you, you have to know, you have to hear from God. You have to be in alignment and, and you have to know who you are in God. You have to know the authority that God's given you, but you have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's your assignment. Mm -hmm. and, and those are, I keep saying it, but those are things that are critical when you do land assignments. So I'm trying to think, what do I want to share quickly? That's a shorter version. Um, we've, we've done assignments even here in town. We'll go, uh, uh, for an example, there's one street, um, one red light where a lot of, uh, sadly, a lot of people there's a lot of car wrecks at this particular red light. This is just a real simple one, but you, you'll get my revelation of it or my understanding, um, hopefully. So we go and pray at this place because so many people are getting killed at this red light. So we just felt like the Lord was sending us there because blood has been shed. Anywhere there's been bloodshed, you have to heal the land. Anywhere there's iniquity, you have to heal the land. And so we, we go down there, we take a team, not a big team, but a team that works together. Mm -hmm. No big people that it's all about me and I get to prophesy and I get to do that. It's a team that we pray together. We strategize together. Mm -hmm. We get the word of the Lord together. We get the timing of the Lord together and then we go do the assignment. So we took a small team down there and just begin to pray. And we did communion. We did what we do. And um, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but in that particular red light, the, the accidents changed. That's changing culture. That's changing. Uh, that's transforming a city. We have a long way to go in Evansville and around the nation mm -hmm. and nations, but that's just one small thing. So then another place, as we do our research um, here in town, 
uh, we we learned that there were back in the day. So we go back in the uh, in the history of Evansville. So that's critical that you do that, right? And and I teach mm -hmm. this when I go and travel as well. And so um, we learned that back in the day when there was a canal downtown. And the war was over because we, I live in a town where they made the ships for the wars and mm -hmm. where they made bullets for the war. Okay. When the war was over, so everybody moved here so they could work. And the men went off to war and women stayed here. When the war was over, everything shut down, right? Well, in, to keep, this is history. I, I went to, we went to the library and learned this. So to keep for, for families as a whole, so that they wouldn't starve or, or worse, they would go and they would either throw their whole families in the canal and commit suicide, or they would just throw their kids in. And, and so we learned this through history. That's a place of death. That's a place of, you know, uh, I don't know how else to say it. That's a place of death. So when we learned this, we were heart sickened, first of all, but now it's covered over, you know, the, the whole canal and it comes all the way through the Ohio River Valley. So it comes down through Pennsylvania, Ohio, all the way down through here. So hmm. um, anyway, it's so it's concrete now, but 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 the 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 situation. Some some would say, and I feel like I just need to teach there a minute. Some would say, well, what if somebody did it before you? What if somebody already prayed there? Sometimes that that happens and, and that's OK. There are layers of mm -hmm. things, layers of revelation and layers of iniquity, layers of of bloodshed, whatever, mm -hmm. however that looks. The key is if it's your assignment, you have to go do it. So it was that's what God showed us to do. So uh, we went down, we prayed, we began to decree and declare. Uh, I'll be honest, um, I believe the suicide rate because that affects the now because mm -hmm. that's an open door, right? to yep. suicide. And we have, unfortunately, a lot of suicides in our region, in our city. So for a while, we watched the rate, suicide rate go down. Now it's back up. So now we're praying, saying, okay, God, what, where is this open door? What do we do? How do we do it? And so uh, those are just two real short things uh, mm -hmm. that, we, that we've done local. Um, and and I'll, I'll turn it over to you because I could keep going. So you could, I'm all excited. Continue. I won't get to sleep tonight. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I so, so appreciate you um, sharing some of your stories and just how God has through alignment and through cooperating with God and his, his heart for a region, seeing transformation and change. I mean, it's absolutely um, powerful. There's several things that you shared that I want to touch on. We don't have time for a whole lot here. We're getting close to our 10 o'clock hour here, trying to keep things somewhat um Somewhat short here, but hard yeah, with me, Bo. You know that. I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I'm but, sorry. You know, you know, some people might be watching right now and saying, Well, I don't feel like that's my cup of tea in terms of spiritual warfare and land assignments and you know, those kind of things. The reality is there's a number of different kingdom endeavors that, that together form the basis for transformation, you know intercession is obviously one of those keys uh, evangelism is one of those keys teaching and training and there, there's so many different elements that actually all work together absolutely to see ultimate transformation each one is powerful by itself but coupled uh by by the whole the whole shebang you know it's absolutely powerful so i just want to kind of put that out there for somebody mm -hmm. You know, they, they work together. It's not good enough. Let me put it this way. It's not good enough just to pray. That's right. We've got to That's evangelize. Right. We've got to disciple. We've got to teach. We've got, you know, there's so many different moving parts in what we call church and our responsibility in the territory that God has for us. But that, that's one that God has given you, uh, you as a pioneer to help blaze a trail and teach others to be successful. And now what you shared about your sickness Mm -hmm. and about the spiritual warfare and those are valuable lessons you learned mm -hmm. that can be helpful for others and so i was thinking about this concept if the devil can't um stop us you know slow us down sometimes he will uh, push us ahead you know yes we get ahead of the timing of god we get you know we get ahead of you know biting off something bigger than what we can chew you know absolutely i believe there is grace for every assignment 
Yes. But if we in our own flesh or our own um, initiative push ourselves into something, we step out of a place of grace. Absolutely. We can step out of a place of divine protection and provision if we're not careful mm -hmm. and get ourselves in trouble. You know, I've, I've seen it on the missions field um, a number of times. Uh, just there is absolute grace for the assignment and protection. But if we're not careful, you can get into a, a predicament. And so. I right. think the set, the seven sons of Sceva, that story is in the there Bible for a reason, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now with that story, of course, these people were not in alignment with God, but the truth is we, we need to be in alignment with God in terms of our calling and what he's speaking to us, but also in alignment with One others another. That's right. in functioning together. So one of the things I believe is as, as leaders, especially pioneering a way for the entire church to move into uh, the transforming work of the church and the more we are one the more of a coordinated effort we have talking about you know the the land assignments intercession warfare prayer teaching evangelism all these components the more one we are i believe there is a direct correlation between ultimate transformation in Absolutely. the land in which we, we live you know i really believe that don't so, you think um, that don't you think that's what we're seeing happen even now that God is bringing that? Um, I said this a couple of years ago. I don't I don't believe the enemy is concerned with our unity. That doesn't bother him. It's the oneness that he doesn't mm. want, because when we become one, we're a, we're a force to be reckoned with. And, mm. and I believe that that we're called to change culture. Culture is not supposed to change the church. We're mm -hmm. supposed to change culture. And, yep. and we're learning that in our kingdom school. We're just learning and, and getting that revelation that he gave us dominion. And we have been lazy and lax and left everything up to the preacher. We've done nothing of what, it, and, and I'm, I'm going to pull aside and, and, and just what I've shared tonight uh, about land and warfare. It's not all about that. It's about taking the kingdom by force, whether it is evangelized. I mean, I'm not just called the land assignments to go out and chase devils or whatever, but it really is. We're called to change a culture. And I believe that we're seeing the, the beginning of the ecclesia, in my opinion, rise up to take dominion and to take mm -hmm. a take our place in the kingdom. And so we can shift culture. That's what we're called. To, that's the purpose God wanted us to partner with him so that we could be a part of the kingdom. We're the ones, I just said it this morning, where do we think that glory is going to cover the earth? Where is that going to come from? It's going to come from you and I yeah, it's because right. we're glory carriers. And so as we go and change culture, the glory will cover the earth. And that comes from us. But we mm -hmm. have to get we have to get past the prayer and go do something. We've heard it. You've probably taught it and said it, too. I don't believe I'm called into politics, but I can pray you in there. I can do what you know, I can mm -hmm. sure support you. But we can't just talk about it. We've got to do what God's. Absolutely. I mean, we got to change it. We got to change things. I want to bring a little clarity to one thing, and maybe you can as well. Sure. Uh, you said that God, the devil's not so concerned with our unity as he is with oneness. Now, what, what I believe that actually means, you could tell me if I'm right or wrong here. It's <laughs> not about just being with people who are just like you. And right. you know, being in the same building or believing exactly the same way no. or even having the same exact gift. It's, it's, I think true oneness is an appreciation of the diversity that God Come gives on. and integrating as, as a whole, you know, that, that's Absolutely. how I see I uh, agree. What, what God desires for all of us, you know, and deferring one can, another, honoring, beautiful. yeah, honoring one another and seeing, like you said, seeing the gifting. I, I don't have the gifting you have and vice versa, but I honor that in you and I defer to let you have that, have your way if we're, you know, mm -hmm. But that's that's the oneness. He doesn't want it. He, he I mean, look at our nation today. We're divided and that's it's it's horrible. Uh, but but kingdom kingdom is rising. The kingdom. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to bow here and say we're not we're not going to make it. Let's go to our sweet by and by. I'm saying that we are kingdom and the kingdom of God. The ecclesia is rising up. And so mm -hmm. if um, I believe it comes with, like you said, a, appreciating the gifts in you and vice versa. And, 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 and it's not, I mean, I have people I minister with from other states. 
So it's not just my local people that, you know, I get to teach. Uh, and what's really cool is when you come together, even in another nation, Bo, but, mm -hmm. but we've done a lot of assignments in Washington, D.C. and all around the nation where you come together with people that uh, you don't even know, but that oneness comes into play and they have that uh, measure of training. And you just know, God, we just did it a couple of weeks ago at Prophetstown, Indiana. And we mm -hmm. had people that really hadn't had the training, but we were one because we had one purpose in mind and that was to heal the land. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Absolutely. One final thought and then we got to wrap this up here. For okay. You know, 1 Corinthians 14 actually has something at the very end of that chapter. It says that if we are, if we are together and it's speaking about oneness he's telling people somebody has a tongue somebody has a prayer somebody has a teaching somebody has a prophecy basically it's pointing at the diversity of gifts but integrating as one he says in that atmosphere of worship he says yeah. someone someone will come into that atmosphere uh, that's changed by your worship and they will fall down and worship god saying god is among yes. you in other words yeah. the principle is this whether it's intercession or uh, the land um, assignments and things of that nature, whatever shifts an atmosphere, there you go. It makes it more conducive for people to come to Jesus and to come into a, a new intimacy with the Lord or to uh, see a level of deliverance take place. You know, the, something's powerful, powerful takes place with whether it's praise and worship, whether it's Absolutely. prayer, whether it's preaching, anything that has the capability to change an atmosphere, it strengthens the pull of the Holy Spirit to do Absolutely. the ministry he wants to do. And so anyway, but you know, if you've been blessed by this uh, session, um, there's two other sessions we did before this. We're going to continue this next week. We have Greg Crawford going to be speaking. He has a, he's a powerful kingdom center called the base in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, I really believe he's a pioneer in a number of ways. You're really going to be blessed by our conversation and what he's going to share with you. The week uh, following is going to be David Hoskins, also uh, someone God's been using powerfully in these endeavors. And I believe these are, these are once again, planting seeds in leaders who maybe haven't seen some of these before. And others of you that God has been speaking to you, this is resonating with you. This is strengthening what God's already begun in you. I'm going to encourage you to connect and just to let um, let the Holy Spirit lead you in your region. Let the Holy yeah. Spirit open your eyes to what he's doing in your region. Uh, and then I'll finish where I started. Let the Holy Spirit open your eyes in terms of where is the place God is choosing to place his name. Come on. Recognize that and connect uh, to those, those key voices in your region that have um an anointing and a grace to pioneer and break through for others i mean there's someone in uh, seoul korea by the name of paul young cho yes yeah he is actually the first church i mean his church ended up being like a million members i mean he really he broke something open and when he did that now there are multiple churches of tens of thousands each yeah. Like, was it Roger Bannister, the first guy who broke the four minute mile? He was a pioneer. And once he did that, now everybody's breaking the four minute mile. So, God wow. does have uh, key leaders in regions that are pioneers that are not trying to make a name for themselves, but they're trying to break things open so other leaders and other churches, that's, that's the it. entire body of Christ, can move into a freedom. And we can have the good success that, that Joshua chapter one promises us yes. if we refuse to go to the left or to the right, but we That's meditate right. on his word day and night and we continue taking it personal that the devil is squatting on our land. Come we on. evict no squatters. the giants That's out right. of the land. This is our right. inheritance. That's and it's right. not about us. We are ambassadors sent to represent God. This is right. God's earth. That's we're right. we're doing what we're doing for him for his glory it's not about us mm -mm. but ultimately it's a partnership it's yes, about aligning it. with the heart of god yep. aligning with the will of god aligning with one another so we can see a bigger picture and accomplish so much more together than we can on yeah. our own thank you so much janet for joining us tonight thank you appreciate for having you. me and uh, your experience and your wisdom and your revelation uh, looking forward to being with you i'll be with you uh a couple of times this year and yes, uh, believing God for great things in Evansville, praying that your woman's conference is absolutely off the Yay. hook. It's going to be powerful. Be. 
and uh, believing God for a great time uh, in July when I'll be with you as well. Yes. And uh, for those of you watching, uh, we have a, a conference in October in Ohio. You definitely want to be a part of Kingdom mm -hmm. Culture. Um, we've got several guests coming in. Becca Greenwood. Yeah. We've got um, Stephen Garner coming in. Uh, we got Mark Pfeiffer coming in. Uh, Derek Thomas will be awesome. leading worship. Got some great things happening. It's to be powerful. God's actually doing what we're talking about here yeah. in the Ohio Valley in this season. And so I'm excited to be a part of something new that's developing in that uh, arena. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. You'll be seeing more about that as we get closer. Um, if you need information, you can message me and I'd be glad to get you a digital flyer. But anyway, you guys have a blessed evening. Janet, do you have any final thoughts you want to share with us here before we close up? Real quick, all I would say is you as a son or a daughter of God have the power and the authority to change the atmosphere wherever you are change the atmosphere speaking the word of god the name of jesus and watch the watch the atmosphere obey it's powerful Absolutely. and when we have a, a number of individuals that change the atmosphere and we come together with corporate worship corporate That's right prayer, it's even amplified even more absolutely. absolutely absolutely let's go change the nations yes let's do it let's do it <laughs> Thank you for having me, though. Unless we change the nation, can't change the nation till we change the region, can't change the region till we, we got to be changed too. It all That's starts right. right here. That's so, right. You're yeah. right, friend. All right. Well, you have a blessed evening, Janet. Everybody watch. God bless you. Uh, you. If you missed part of the broadcast, you can rewind it. I'll put this back on my page for you. Be blessed. I'm out. Thank, Thank you, you, Janet, once again. We'll be talking Thank to you, you soon. Yes, you will. Peace out. Bye-bye.